All right, today we are doing Chapter 5, Section 4, which is Polygons. It's a little bit shorter section after the really long one yesterday. So I think it'll be a little easier for you this time around. Uh, but want to jump into these. So poly means many, if you go back to the Latin or Greek or whatever, it's from probably Latin. Uh, so where you have like, um, basically it's a many-sided figure or something like that. So it's a geometric shape, so geometric with at least, I wouldn't draw these, especially because my drawings are going to be pretty shoddy, but ideally you have straight sides, so there's my five-sided figure, it has to be enclosed, could have a four-sided figure, straight sides enclosed, could have a three-sided figure, but now once you get to like a two-sided, you can't have it be enclosed. Um, you could try doing this, but then it's really just a straight line, or really two lines on top of each other, two line segments. So with these, it has to have at least three sides. Those first two with only two sides, they're not enclosed. So a geometric shape with at least three sides. And now, kind of like we went back to triangles and quadrilaterals, and how do we classify them, how do we put them into groups. And with these polygons, we classify them by number of sides. So classified by number of sides. And you may know all these. I am going to ask them for sure. So on quizzes, on tests, be able to say, all right, this picture here is going to be, and give the name, like we have listed down below. So a couple of them will probably be easy. Like right here, I have a three-sided object. That's going to be a triangle. So tri meaning three. A uh, four-sided object, you think of a four-wheeler, often they call it a quad runner. At least they did back when I was a kid, so quadrilateral. And you have that quad, meaning four. Five, you can think of what's a, what's a popular, what's an important building with five sides. That'd be the Pentagon. Kind of the head of the defense here in the U.S. So penta means five. Um, Six is hex, so hexagon. So the hex or the hexa. And then eight, you can think of a spider, so it's an octagon. So octa means eight. Uh, the other ones, we're not really going to get into the name now. They'll have like dodecahedron, well, dodecagons and decagons and some other ones like that. Septagons, maybe you think of. Hank the Septipus from Finding Dory. So anywho, um, I digress, sorry. So okay, so regular polygon. Not good at drawing these. If you have a regular polygon, if you look at it, I was trying to get one where, so this one I copied, it's not a hand drawing, but if you take and turn your page, it might look like it is, but basically I was aiming for all sides and angles congruent. So all the sides are congruent, and then you could also say all the angles are congruent like so. So all the sides are congruent, all the angles are congruent. So all sides and angles are congruent. So if we were to go through those, and I kind of gave you a little bit of a hint in the notes yesterday. It must have been yesterday. Um, how many total degrees in a hexagon? So we did this for a quadrilateral. But you could take and break this into triangles. And the key is you can't have your triangles um, have any of the corners or the vertices be in the middle. All the corners of your triangles have to be along the edge. So if I would take and make a triangle right here, this angle, this angle, this angle, I'll add it to 180. If I make a second triangle there, this angle, which completes that corner, this angle and this angle add up to 180. If I make another triangle here, this angle, which completes that corner, and this angle and this angle add up to 180. Then my last triangle, this angle, completes the corner, this angle, this angle, completes the corner add up to 180. So if I have these four triangles, you'll notice that all of those outside angles are all covered inside those four triangles. And I have 180 degrees here, 180 degrees here, 180 degrees here, 180 degrees there. So in other words, 4 times 180 degrees should tell me how many degrees are in a hexagon. So that would be 720 
degrees there for a hexagon. And I should be able to go through and do the exact same thing. This one looks a whole lot worse, but I still have four triangles for a total of 720 degrees. So I think, yep, we're to the turning a page. So if you want to go through and find that, there's two ways you could do it. One way is going to be to go through break up triangles from the vertices. And that's kind of my, well, it's maybe from the vertices. That's what I was trying to say, that make sure your triangles all start and stop. All the corners are along the edge of your polygon. And then each of those triangles is 180 degrees, so multiply the number of triangles by 180 degrees. So that totally works. But what's cool is we had a six-sided object. There ended up being four triangles. If we go through and do an eight-sided object, we'd end up with six triangles. If we did a four-sided object, like we did yesterday, maybe a quick draw one, now I have two triangles. So you'll notice the number of triangles is always two less than the number of sides. And that's where this equation here comes in. I love it when you can actually understand what's going on in a math equation. I really do. That if we want to figure out the sum of the degrees, the total angle of all the degrees, well, we needed to multiply it 180 by the number of triangles. And the number of triangles is always two less than the number of sides. So use s equals n minus 2 times 180. And I'll maybe say where n, n equals the number of sides, and if you wanted to, you could say s equals the sum of the angles. And so, for example, if we wanted to do a, maybe an eight-sided object, or yeah, an eight-sided object. So we'll say example, eight sides, sum of the angles, and sum means add them all together. Well, I just take my equation. I'm going to try to convince you to show your work, so I'm going to copy this first. And if we have eight sides, we just put an eight in there for n. n is the number of sides. And we have that in parentheses, so we have to either do distributive, but a whole lot easier just subtract first. So eight minus two is six. Six times 180. So I'd have 600, 1,080 degrees. So any octagon, any eight-sided object, is going to have 1,080 degrees total. That's it for this section. Let me know if you have any questions.